Hello and welcome to this video. In today's video I'm going to show you how you can take a crusty old beeswax wrap and make it like new again. Now I've got a confession to make. I've never actually done this before but I've read some articles and watched some videos and I'll put some links in the description box below so you can go read other people's recipes. That said, I think we'll be able to do it and you'll be able to see if anything goes wrong. To do this project, we will need a pastry brush. I just picked this up at the, the cheapo shop around the corner. And the rest of the stuff I got from eBay, which is always fun it's great when you get stuff from eBay and it looks super dodgy and this is a prime example of that. So we got some jojoba oil and that came in a little Ziploc baggie. Great. We'll use, I think, a tablespoon of this. As I said, I'm guessing some recipes say one, some recipes say two. I also got some pine resin that arrived in this little envelope and again, Ziploc bag looks super dodgy. And lastly, I got beeswax. So that again came in an envelope, in a baggie, looks great, most vital important ingredient. So that's the beeswax. Now I have seen some people do this with only beeswax, but from what I've read, it actually helps to have all of these bits and pieces. Some add stickiness, some add, I don't know what else, but we'll put them all in together and see what happens. So now we've got all the ingredients, let's get started. I'm not sure why the oven feels threatened, but anyway, we preheat it to a low temperature, about 100 degrees Celsius, and chuck the kettle on to boil. And when that hot water's ready, I will pour it into a pan ready to heat on the stovetop. Next, I place a glass bowl in the pan, and into that we're going to pour our eBay ingredients. So first I go with the beeswax and I put in all of the beeswax. Next it's pine resin and I decided to use about half of the bag. Then I add one tablespoon of the jojoba oil. Next I mix everything together and we wait until it's all melted. It turned out this saucepan wasn't big enough so I had a little panic and then switched to a larger saucepan and then it was fine. At one stage I got a hair in the mixture which was sticky and gross and I decided that I would show you all. So here it is. After a few more minutes the mixture was fully melted and mixed together so I was ready to paint it onto the wrap. I brushed on the mixture so that there was a thin layer covering the wrap and then it was time to pop it in the oven. Once the wax had fully melted into the fabric and the fabric was a little bit see-through, it was time to pull it out of the oven. Now, unfortunately, I'd let it dry a little bit too long on the tray. So what happened was the tray was left with this sticky residue on it, but that was all right. All I did was put it back into the oven, let it remelt, and then the second time I knew I needed to get it off the tray as quickly as possible. So I did that carefully, peeling it off and putting it onto a drying rack. Then I did the same process with the other small racks, painting them, putting them in the oven, peeling them off and drying them out. For my largest wrap, it wouldn't actually fit on the tray, so I ended up folding it up and pasting on more wax than I had for the other one, so there would be enough wax to soak through and get on all of the fabric. After a couple of minutes in the oven, I pulled it out and set it to dry, but when I dried the large wrap, I ended up with chunks of wax, especially in the creases. So to fix that, I put the wrap back in the oven that had been turned off now, and that residual heat was enough to warm the wax up again, and I could brush it down smoothly. And that seemed to work pretty well. We ended up with a smooth wrap. So overall, did it work? Yeah. 
now my beeswax wraps were like new again and I could use them in all different ways around my kitchen. How good is that? What about the rest of the wax mix? Now with all the leftover beeswax mix, I would like to scrape it all off, save as much as I can and actually put it into one of the eBay bags so that next time I need to do this, the mixture is already ready to go. On the tray, I used a metal knife to scrape off as much of the wax as I could. And I did a similar thing in the bowl, trying to save as much as I could. So there we have it. Now you know how to revitalize, refresh and re-wax your beeswax wraps. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a big like, thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you have an idea of something that you would like to see me make a video doing, then please chuck something in the comments. That's all for now. Until next time, see ya!